Hey, how's it going? So today I am out walking with this camera right here. This is the Pentax Q, a camera released in 2011, uh, an interchangeable lens camera released in 2011. And uh, this is like the smallest interchangeable lens camera that I own. I don't know if it's the smallest ever, but it is the smallest that I own. So that's got to count for something, right? But anyway, I got this camera, uh, so the body, plus the Zero One, which is like the standard prime lens, and the, I think it's called Zero Two, which is the uh, zoom lens. And I got a uh, leather grip and four extra batteries, all for about 15,000 yen, which I don't know the exact uh, conversion rate right now, but I believe it's about 120 or 130 US dollars. So in my opinion, I think that's a steal because, I don't know, I, I feel like it could have gone for at least $50 more, but I don't know, I got it at a good price. So I couldn't, I couldn't resist. So I have no idea how this works. I only bought it just because I was already interested in this camera. Uh, I first uh, heard about this, I think through, I think Micro Four, Ner uh, Micro Four Nerds, I believe that's uh, her channel name. So uh, she's uh, mainly a Micro Four Thirds shooter, but I believe she commented, or she made a video based on this camera, which is like the tiniest that she owns also. Um, I, I don't know if it's this, the Q, but it could have been like the later versions, maybe like the, the uh, Q10 or something, but very, very similar, or maybe like a later iteration of this camera. But yeah, I was really, really curious on this camera. So I was like, ooh, I want to get it for myself. And I, I think it's just like a fun camera. I don't know, but I'll find out soon enough. So let's go and uh, take some photos. So, so I'm going to start off uh, taking photos walking around this park. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually get anything nice or anything interesting just because there's not a lot happening, uh, in my opinion. It's, it's uh, pretty dead so far. But I just wanted to uh, point out something very uh, funny, in my opinion. So I hooked up uh, my other phone, my, my old phone, onto the top of the camera so I could try to do some POV. And this is how it turned out. So the phone is actually bigger than the camera. And I didn't think it'd be this, like, this much of a difference. But yeah, I just thought it was funny. So anyway, let's go.
I just wanted to test something out because for the Pentax, there are, uh, I guess, various presets or like uh, image styles where it's just uh, basically tweaked of different, like the, the reds are tweaked or the greens, blues, whatever. And uh, you can also do monochrome. And I set it up right now to see if the setup I have for the still images applies with the video recording mode because I don't know. So I set it up to be black and white, and if this video is in black and white right now, then that means it does transfer over from whatever your uh, photos, your, your stills settings, it transfers over to whatever the video recording would be. So that would be very interesting. Okay, so now that I've gone out and used this camera for a little bit, I tested out the uh, Zero One prime lens and also the Zero Two standard zoom lens. Uh, I think I, I've used it enough just to give my final thoughts on this um, camera. And first I'll start off with the negatives. Uh, with these lenses, it's more so on the zoom lens than it is the prime lens, but this here is the focus ring. And I feel like this is just a little bit too sensitive to move because when I'm holding it, I'm trying to take the photo, sometimes my finger rubs against it and slightly just turns it, just, just a slight nudge. And that kind of messes it up, in my opinion, just because, of course, your, your focus will change slightly. But also, when you focus, uh, manual focus, uh, it's got the manual focus assist where it kind of zooms in, uh, two times magnification, to check if you're in focus. And it's a good feature, but, the fact that this is so sensitive that just the way I'm holding it, just a tiny, tiny nudge like that would um, uh, would trigger the uh, focus assist. It's more so on the, the zoom than it is the prime, but it's just something I've noticed when I was using it. I don't know if it's a problem with my zoom lens or if this is a problem with all of these lenses. Um, like I said, it's it's a little bit more sensitive on the zoom than it is the prime, but yeah, that's just something I noticed. Another possible negative. This is a possible negative, is that uh, so here I don't I didn't mention it before. So here there's this uh, dial here, and it's got the uh, the dot and a one two three, and so depending on how you have the camera set up, for now like I think the default setting is um, the one two three four. It will filter through different, uh, I guess, preset filters. They're, they're not exactly uh, image um, settings. They're, they're more like filters that are applied. So if you look in the menu, or actually the first, let me switch to one, for example. I'll switch to one and then go to the menu. So in the camera settings, the third, uh, the third uh, camera options menu, if you go down here to the quick dial, it'll show you what the dial would be. So right now, I think the default would be what it says there, which is smart effect. And it uh, shows different uh, filters that you can you can change what, what they are. But why I don't like it is because when you shoot this, it only shoots JPEG. It, it doesn't allow you to shoot raw, which 
I just think that could be a slight, a slight negative just because what if there's just a small, small, teeny tiny uh, thing you want to edit, but you have to edit the JPEG. And I know a lot of people who just would rather to like prefer to edit raw files. But if you use the smart effects, you cannot edit raws with this. It'll only shoot JPEG. So what you have to do is you would have to shoot in the, the dot mode, which is the default settings, and then you can shoot with uh, JPEG raws, but you won't have that filter effect. So that kind of leads on to what I think is a positive. So instead of um, the filters, you have, I guess, image styles or image setting presets where Again, if you look at the menu, this time in the first first uh, settings menu, if you go here, this is custom image. This will show you, uh, let me just give you an example. So right now it's default natural and you can see the color wheel here. And then if you go through the different ones, it'll change the uh, the color wheel settings. And I feel like this is this is a very neat little thing if you wanna just quickly change your various like color settings and it's nice i've been using this a lot the radiant and also the uh monochrome so those are pretty much my two mainly used ones so far i just i just really like the way they look straight out of camera but again there, there's so many different ones that you can choose from and it's it's just a nice little little feature and yeah that, that's that's pretty much what I really like about this. And since this is JPEG raw, you can edit these files afterwards to a little bit more of your preference if, if you feel necessary. So yeah, basically those are, those are pretty much my thoughts on this camera. I really enjoyed the, uh, the stills images, especially after using the uh, various settings in here. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the uh, positives and negatives that uh, I pretty much stumbled across when using this camera and the, the various lenses. I really, really enjoyed using this camera, surprisingly. I didn't think I would like it this much, just because I'm like, oh, it's just a, it's a small camera. It's uh, not very capable because it's so small and uh, it's more like a toy. But after using it and really like kind of digging deep into at least just the basic stills settings, I, I found out that this is a very capable camera uh, for, for Photography as a hobby, probably obviously not a, a professional setting, but yeah, as a hobby, if you just like going around taking photos, definitely this is a very good option, especially if you can get this camera for about $150 or maybe less. I don't think I would purchase this for over $150 unless there's just a lot of stuff such as more than two lenses, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's all I got to say. Um, I definitely really enjoyed this. Oh, one thing I, I want to mention, sorry. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that, yes, this is a pocketable camera, technically, because I did put this in my pocket uh, when it was the prime lens uh, attached. I did put this in my pocket, uh, sweatpants pocket, but it wasn't exactly comfortable in my pocket. So that's just something to uh, think about. Like a lot of people like to say, oh, this camera over here or that camera there is, is pocketable. But, yes, it can fit in the pocket, but is it comfortable, you know? This isn't a compact camera like the uh, Fuji X-Q1 that I have. At least that is pocketable and comfortable. But this, I don't think it's exactly comfortable in your pocket. So that's just something to think about uh, whenever, you, whenever you hear people talking about a pocketable camera. So usually they're probably talking about like a coat pocket, which at that point I would say yes, it's very pocketable and comfortable. But in like sweatpants or uh, like jeans pocket, technically, yes, it is pocketable. But like I said, is it comfortable? I don't know. But anyway, thank you for watching. I will talk to you later. See ya.